What's going on you guys? Hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. Coyote season here in Indiana is officially out for the year. I will still be hunting some, but not as much as I typically do during regular coyote season. Coyote season here runs from October to March. One question that I kept continuing to get was my rundown, my setup on my 6.5 Grendel build. And just figured I'd do a complete review on this, kind of the components that I used in this build and just run through the specs front to end. So let's get right into it. So I built this rifle two or three years ago and have made some changes to it throughout the time. But for the most part, it has stayed pretty similar to the way it was when I originally built it. That's the great thing about AR-15 platforms, it's kind of like Legos for adults. For the stock, I'm using the Magpul ACS stock, just fits me really well. And it has quite a bit of surface area up here on the top to get comfortable. I've got an attachment point back here for my sling and I'll show you guys the sling here in just a little bit. Whenever I night hunt, I do not use a sling because as soon as I get out of the truck, I set this up on the tripod and then I'm able to throw this up on my shoulder and just walk out to my location throw it on my shoulder when I'm done, walk back to the truck so I don't need a sling at night. It's just one more thing to clank against the tripod and cause extra movement, extra noise. Moving on to the grip here, um, I'm a big fan of Ergo grips. They're still pretty rigid, but they have a little bit softer texture than the typical Magpul or your standard AR-15 grip. Big fan of those, running an ambidextrous safety. For the trigger, I'm using a Geisley SSA trigger. Just super clean, super crisp brake on this. Running the BCM Gunfighter oversized charging handle. Just gives you a little more something to grab a hold of in case you need a quick reload. And you'll notice here on the side, it's got this oversized paddle for the mag release. Just a little bit easier to hit that with your finger at night. Um, I don't know, it says 6.5 Grindle on it. Just something I added on, probably not a necessity. Uh, moving up to the top here. So this year I moved from night vision to thermal and man what a game changer that has been you guys are probably seeing that have watched uh, the video series from this past year i think i got six or seven different videos on there using this setup uh, i'll make sure and throw a card up here so you guys can take a look at that and then put that playlist at the end of this video as well if you guys care to take a look but anyway this is the new pulsar thermion xp38 model sometimes there are cases where i wish i would have went with the xp50 but so far i've been really happy with this I uh, do a lot of beaver eradication and this is nice. Whenever I'm setting up on a creek, creek bank and the beaver are up pretty close, this has a great field of view and not a whole lot of magnification, so it's pretty nice. Uh, you'll see here that I'm running a BCM uh, bolt carrier and bolt carrier group. Big fan of BCM products and definitely don't want to go cheap on your bolt carrier assembly. For the lower receiver on this build, I just used a standard uh, Spikes Tactical. Uh, lower receiver but for the upper I did go with the mega billet and eventually I'll probably get the mega billet lower but right now uh, just not something that I've done yet moving on out front here I uh, went with the AGL defense rail free float rail uh, big fan of this hand guard just real streamlined real clean I'm not a big fan of rails all over uh, my hunting rigs I do like a lot of rails on my home defense weapons but for night hunting I like it to be fairly streamlined and then I went with M lock so I could add the rail pieces wherever I need it. And up here, I have an attachment point for my sling. I'll go over that here in just a little bit. And then I do have one rail piece up here up front uh, in case I do switch this to a daylight rig, then I can throw a bipod on here and I can switch out with the quick release on this scope. I'm running the Vortex uh, HST. This is the four to 16 model. And then this is a quick release as well. So I can take the thermal off and then put the daytime scope on and be able to switch back and forth very easily. And both of these, luckily, they do hold zero pretty well. I always make sure and confirm zero. But so far, I've been really happy with the process of switching these in and out and going back and forth. And following up with that, whenever I do switch to uh, daytime hunting with this rifle, I'll use the uh, Vickers Combat Applications Blue Force Gear Sling. And like I say, got the QD release up front here. I'll just snap this in and then I'll take the uh, rear portion of the sling and then I can just thread it through the ACS stock. Uh, I have a JP Rifles adjustable gas block on this because I do run it suppressed 100% uh, of the time. 
Once you go suppressed, you won't want to shoot any way else. And the barrel that I'm using on this is a JP Rifles match grade barrel, uh, one Nate Twist, 18 inch barrel. I have a Coltec suppressor cover up front here, and that is covering a Griffin Armament Recce 7. I really like the Recce 7 because it's super easy to switch this between different platforms. All you have to have is there a certain type of muzzle device, the taper mount, and then you can take this suppressor and throw it on whatever rifle you're gonna be using that day or night. And you guys have probably seen my rifle tripod setup on a couple different videos that I put out, but this is a Markins ball head that I'm using, and that is a direct mount on the AGL defense rail. And then the tripod that I'm using is the hog saddle tripod. Just wanna make a real quick correction on that, guys. I noticed when I was explaining the bolt carrier group that it sounded like, I was using the BCM, the Bravo Company actual bolt, but it is a matching JP Rifles bolt that comes with the barrel if you purchase through JP Rifles website. And now we're just gonna roll right into a couple daylight shots. These shots are right at 765 yards with the 6.5 Grindel. And then right after that, we'll roll into some night clips of some coyotes that I've taken down. And that's pretty much it guys for the 6.5 Grindle build that I use for coyote hunting. Like I say, I was just trying to answer some questions here, go through this full build that I did. If you guys have any questions at all with this setup, make sure and comment down below. Try to get back to those questions pretty quickly. Appreciate you guys being here. Happy hunting. Be safe. See you next time.